Thank you, Mark. So we heard some incredible discussions this morning and a lot of big vision and ideas. And um, now we're going to start getting into some of the nitty gritty details for about I2B2 and Shrine implementation. So I want to try to link some of the stuff we heard about this morning to some of the top priorities that we're thinking about for I2B2 and Shrine and mapping those to the presentations we'll be hearing about later today as well as for tomorrow. So there are two big themes, I think, that are driving a lot of the development right now in ITB to Enshrine. And they map to what we heard this morning. So the first theme is leveraging AI and LLMs in support of next generation clinical trials. Of course, that relates to uh, the discussion that Zach had with Chris White and the LLM panel following that. And the second big theme is linking electronic health record data to public health data for pathogen readiness and health disparities research. And that relates to our keynote, Robbie Goldstein, and the mass CPR panel that we had earlier today. And there are various stakeholders, funders, and participants who are helping in these two different domains. There are several technologies that we need to achieve these visions that we're hearing about. On the AI LLM side of things, we need to first be able to generate AL, AI ML ready data sets. So we have a common data model in I2B2, but it's not the right format to be plugging into typical AI models. We need to export and pivot the data into the right format. We need a place to store these exported data. So that's where ephemeral cloud enclaves come in. We'll hear about that later, about how they can provide secure compute. I've been working a lot with something called digital twins. The raw data that we load into these systems have numerous data quality biases, data quality problems, and you need to be able to use that data in a more effective way. So we have machine learning algorithms that take the raw data and figure out what conditions a patient actually has. We call this their digital twins. Then finally, something called prompt to query. And that can mean a lot of different things here. It's kind of describing, I'm just going to just type in uh, in text description what I'm looking for and that will convert it into an ITB2 query for me, or describe what kind of data set I'm looking for and extract it. These are technologies related to this first topic. For the second topic, in order to link EHR data to public health research and get useful information out of it, one of the things we need are new types of data visualizations, breakdowns, and reporting, specifically spatial temporal queries analyses. So breaking down things by geographic region and different time periods. We also need to be able to do batch queries and reporting. These queries have to be automated. We can't have somebody manually each morning querying to see if there are new patients with infectious disease at a hospital. This has to be something that runs automatically and alerts us when something important has been found. We mentioned it very briefly at our panel this morning, and we're not going to get into too much at this conference today, but privacy preserving record linkage is needed to be able to track patients over time as they switch between healthcare systems and multi-party computation algorithms deal with some of the rare events and early outbreaks, which the data may be obfuscated currently in the way that I2B2 and Shrine handle privacy, but may need to be relaxed for certain use cases. So here's a bit complicated picture, but it tries to pull all of these different things together. So in the top and the center is our query tool that uh, we, I showed a kind of quick mock of it earlier, then you'll see more of it later at this conference. But it's a simple user interface that allows people to take the medical concepts that they want and combine into a query or define the kind of breakdowns they want. We're enhancing this in different ways with large language models, digital twin visualizations, plugin visualizations, and ways of exporting the data. The front end website points back to our I2B2 systems. There's the raw data that comes in. And historically, that's been in the I2B2 data model. We load electronic health record, but now we also support OMOP. And then, as I met, just mentioned, the raw data has lots of problems, so we generate what's called digital twins from that. There's lots of different data that can lead into this, electronic health record data, notes, genomic data, index images, and patient-reported outcomes through tools like REDCap. And then we have our Shrine hubs and software that allows us to build federated networks so you go beyond your own institution and look outside to different hospitals around the country or across the world. And then data can be exported from the networks and through I2B2 with appropriate governance into ephemeral cloud enclaves where you have the privacy and compute needed for deeper analyses. So if you follow me through all that, then what I'm going to do next is show you 
the different talks we're going to have later today and tomorrow, and how they map onto this picture. So following me, we're going to have presentations from Jeff Klan about some of the new features in I2B2, particularly in some of the plugins and uh, other uh, components that are part of the new 1.8.1 release. We're going to hear about the ENACT network. Uh, I mentioned we heard earlier about our local regional mass CPR, but we'll help hear about the broader national network uh, called ENACT. Sean and I will give a brief introduction to the digital twin journey, but we'll go into a lot more detail about this tomorrow. And uh, at the end of the day, we're going to hear more about Snowflake and some about scalable deployments and federated uh, research networks using these technologies. And if you stay around for tomorrow, we'll hear from the user interface working groups and the ontology working groups and the latest that are coming out of those. We'll go into more depth about it's called computational phenotypes and loyalty colors, which are the two key algorithms that are behind the digital twin effort. And we'll hear about another national network um, leveraging this same software out of Germany. And finally, at the end of the day tomorrow, we'll hear about some latest um, phenotyping and a machine learning APIs that also will be contributing to the digital twin effort. We'll hear from Persistent again about AI precision medicine and um, using large language models for chart review when we're looking at how to pull data into these systems. And then the last session at the end of the day tomorrow will be these how large language models are enhancing I2B2 in the query tool and in other aspects of the software. Hopefully you followed me through that. We'll keep coming back to reminding you about this and, and hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow, to see all the new technologies that are coming out and linking them back to the presentations we heard this morning. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Questions? Or did you... Is there any questions on this? It's a lot. I think I mean, you'll hear about all these uh, different groups. We'll be able to answer a lot of the details on that, but just sort of format or uh, agenda for the rest of the symposium. All right, let's, let's right. keep going. Push on up then, great.